Hey, what's up, y'all, and welcome to another Take One Review. I know it's been a minute, but I am back, and I'm talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. Spoiler free. I'm going to have a spoiler review after I do this one, so look out for that, but this is non-spoiler, so I'm going to try and keep away from it because there's so much I could talk about this movie, and spoilers are just one of the things that just making it hard to review this movie, but I'm going to try my best. And so just to get right into it, this movie was incredible. This was a movie that I was hoping that when I went to go see it, that it was going to like exceed my expectations or meet my expectations. And it did both. I'm glad that they were able to put everything that they were able to put inside this movie and do it well. This movie is very emotionally driven from beginning to end. With Peter having to deal with this new problem that is ruining his life, surrounding his friends. As the stakes are now extremely high. Higher than it's ever been with him. Like not counting the whole Infinity War and Thanos thing. But as far as his movies go. And the humor is great. Not everything works. But the ones that did really did do it for me and the chemistry is still there with the characters from the past films with both pro and antagonists and the new acquaintances that meet in this film and i want to just say that this to me is the best out of the three mcu spider-man movies i feel like it's progressively got better with homecoming far from home and now no way home literally go in that order from least to best and when i say least i'm not even saying that that movie was trash because it wasn't it still was good but you know it's just progressively gotten better the action scenes are dope as hell from the bridge scene with dr octopus all the way to the end climax and even just the balance of the amount of villains used didn't come across overbearing mainly because we've been previously introduced to these characters in prior films and even then i felt like they wasn't mishandled now some do have more of a presence than others but that is to be expected and i love the utilization of willem dafoe as green goblin he was very effective and even more dark than he was in the first sam raimi spider-man film and most definitely one of the standouts in this film and jamie fox as electro was really good i did enjoy him in his film he came across as more of a comic relief for the villain and i actually did enjoy him more in this film than i did in the amazing spider-man 2 and it is kind of a slight departure from how he was in the amazing spider-man 2 and also there is an unanswered question about his look from how he was in the amazing spider-man 2 to now i mean they do touch on it but they don't quite explain why he looks so drastically different than he did in that film and dr octopus was real good too he had a very effective intro as well as a dope entrance and lizard and sandman were really just extra villains to fight and they had no presence as big as electro dr octopus or even green goblin but i mean it's not a real minus against the film i mean this film is already like trying to juggle a whole bunch of characters and different things so it's like some people are gonna get the slight back burner. And the film does have several surprising elements that did work really well. It's not too much Doctor Strange in this film, but just enough to where it's not like a whole, he can't do things without a mentor or somebody helping him out. But I would say that this film, without any spoilers, does push the Spider-Man franchise in a interesting direction moving forward. With hints of the future leaving the curiosity to grow as to where it's gonna go next in the franchise as well as the MCU. The film plays very heavy on nostalgia and it's still very enjoyable even without having to see all the other Spider-Man films but doesn't hit as effective as it would had you seen all the films prior getting all the references the jokes easter eggs and just all the nostalgia that this film is delivering but yeah there is a lot of fan service but it works really well and it is very obviously taking influence very heavy influence from spider-verse a, a spider-man movie that did work on this basically this and it does obviously take very high uh, and it does and it does very much take heavy influence from Spider-Verse that literally kind of goes on this premise in a sense. But that doesn't really take away from the film with me. Because us as fans, we would have wanted to see something like Spider-Verse being done in live action anyway. So we got to see that and it was awesome. And just to end it off, there are two post credit scenes. So if you were thinking about sticking around, they both are worth sticking around for because they do give hints toward the future. And so with that said, that wraps up this review for Spider-Man No Way Home. 
home and definitely definitely go check it out if you haven't seen it yet i don't know why you haven't definitely go check it out go rush right now just go and go ahead and leave a like subscribe to this channel if you haven't and hit that notification bell for more videos and i'm going to record my spoiler review so i will catch you guys on that one as well as other videos so peace out and stay safe